Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new full playthrough. I am TJ. I hope you guys uh Hello, missed everyone, have, uh, and Hold on, sorry. I hope you guys uh I hope you guys didn't miss me too much. Uh my trip to Japan was fabulous and I, it was excellent. Uh an excellent fun time experience just living the just re experiencing the the nostalgia that I uh that I had uh from my last trip five years ago, but it was even more um, intimate to say the least in terms of what I've experienced in Japan. Um, I'll be talking about my trip uh, here and there throughout this entire full playthrough, but this is Sherlock Holmes The Awakened. And so here's a funny story. I was supposed to do Resident Evil 4 Remake as my next full playthrough following my, tr my uh, end of the trip. Uh, but what happened was when I, I thought I started the the broadcast when I thought I was doing the first episode and then it turns out I didn't record anything now mind you I started doing the broadcast about a day or two after I, I came back home but the jet lag was still settling in pretty rough I mean I mean when I flew down from from SFO to Hanada Airport I didn't feel any jet lag. I thought I got a good amount of rest on the plane and ate pretty well. And I ate pretty well in, down to Japan too. But coming back here from Japan, flying and like it was like a it was a shorter trip since we fly with the wind, uh, less than nine hours uh, flying back home. But the jet lag lingered so bad. I mean, it lingered for roughly over a week. Uh, catching myself not being able to fall asleep past midnight and I couldn't sleep until like 2 a.m. 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning for about 7 to 10 days but I'm able to catch up on my sleep now falling asleep around 11 or no later than midnight like my usual time but but uh, I'm starting to get used to the sun being laid out uh, over here on the west coast uh, mind you Japan does not have uh, what do you call that? Does not have daylight savings. Sorry, that's, man, I had a huge brain fart. Uh, daylight savings over there because they the, the the sunset does settle in pretty early, like around 6 p.m., 6 p.m., 6:30 p.m. at the latest, and it's springtime. So, but uh, it does uh, go down pretty late in the summer. But um, here we are, Sherlock Holmes: The Awakening. I did promise this full playthrough uh, right before. Uh, right before my trip to Japan, it was announced uh, in the last full playthrough, which was Dead Space. And so, uh, there's a brief story behind this. So you already saw the, the, the opening titles in which this game was being produced while, uh, by Frogwares, in which you guys know Frogwares is, is a company down in Ukraine. <clears throat> and this was delayed several times because of the Russo-Ukrainian war that's been going on now, uh, going down over there for over a year. And it was supposed to come out, I believe, in November, but then that got pushed back to February of this year. Then it got pushed back once more to uh, April. It actually came out uh, April, like uh, early April. I think it was April eighth or something like that. So sometime, sometime after I came back from my trip. But um, but this game, from based on what I saw on the. Based on what I saw on the on the on the gameplay trailers and some of the gameplays I've uh, videos I've seen in this game, this first of all this game is a remake of the 2007 game produced by the same company Frogwares, but this game in particular, The Awakened, is not only a remake of the 2007 version, but it also plays out like a sequel to Sherlock Holmes Chapter One. And which was one of the big sleeper hits of of 2021. And so, let's see. This game is not is a little more linear. It's semi. I think it's semi open world, but it's not going to be very wide open like like Chapter One. So we're going to play this through probably one chapter at a time per episode. We'll, we'll see how the the pacing is. And young detective, master of detection, oh, Mycroft. Um, 
I'm the young detective, so we'll do... Yeah, I think I did Young Detective last time or something close to that. And this game was also produced by the... Or, uh, Frogware is also produced. Another game I did a full playthrough a few years back, which was... Oh my god, man, I am so out of it. What was that game called? Uh, I'm looking at my catalog right now. Uh, what was it? Oh, the, oh, the Sinking City. There we go. So, the Sinking City. And speaking of the, the Sinking City, where it took place, or they had an atmosphere where where you have the Cthulhu Mythos, and this game, The Awaken, is centered around that. So, there's there is some there is some correlation between. Uh, between this game and let me turn up this a bit. I'm gonna play with the sound audio a bit. Let's see video. We got long gameplay. So I'm gonna turn that off. Controls. It should be the same as... Oh, it seems a little more limited, possibly. But uh, we'll see. So... So Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. Uh, Frogwares, as you know, very big on the Sherlock Holmes game, as well as games surrounded by the Cthulhu Mythos by that author, my love... H.P. Lovecraft, excuse me. So, enough talking. Uh, let's get to it. Oh, he's afraid of water. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's some good advice. So on with the game. You know, I could have sworn I turned off subtitles, but let me see. Unless I forgot to save it. Well, let's see. Dr. Watson, would you kindly close the door behind you so that we can limit the price of your carelessness to merely hours of work rather than days? My apologies, Mr. Holmes. Holmes. The same voice actors from the previous game. I like the consistency so far. The in war-torn Afghanistan. Are those my surgical needles? I ran out of tax and the matter required immediate attention. Was that my supper? Plainly not, for I was the one who ate it. Hmm, I set it aside for this evening. And for that, I am grateful. Is that my bed? Watson, since you've proven yourself a master of observation, might I ask you to apply your skills to a more pertinent question? Namely, the whereabouts of today's newspapers. They are the key to everything. The newsboy is usually reliable. Medically speaking, I often find that the key to everything is good sleep. In a bed. Your papers are here, on the table. Let us see what the postman brought today. That's a very welcoming way to to a very welcome way to introduce the players around. Okay, let's see. This mess, this mess is getting out of hand. What will the landlady think? I'm close, I know it. I just need one more piece to crack the case. Most of us put our thoughts to paper, not to walls, Mr. Holmes. Am I oh, here it is. This is all coming back to me now. This plays out just like uh, chapter one. Let's see what this is.
Local gossip, all of it uninteresting. Your order from Barnes Bookshop has arrived, Doctor. Barnes insists on delivering the books to our door, even though we could easily walk to his shop. That's good service. Another letter from Werner. Oh, cool. I never reply, but they keep coming. Uh, Werner Vogel was the... I think it was the, the artist? From chapter I one? The strand. Where is it? Pardon me? I am on the precipice of uncovering a pattern of crime across London spanning many months and involving many men. The missing paper cannot be a coincidence. That's preposterous. My dear fellow, life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man can invent. Well, life used your newspaper to wipe its posterior, so after that unpleasant discovery this morning, I disposed of it. But in lieu of the strand, perhaps I can deliver you something equally tantalizing. I have just returned from a patient of mine, Captain Stemwick, who... No, no, that will not do. Grab your coat, Dr. Watson. Let us hope nobody has collected the dustbin. The strand is missing. Oh, what is that? Okay. All right, here we go. So Watson brought in the morning. The strand is missing. Uh, that's where you gotta link the clues together, okay. And there's the- oh! That's the map. Okay. And let's see what clothes I can get. Uh, ooh! Oh, I gotta use the- I gotta use the stick, okay. So let's- what's a good clothing? And it's raining! Cool and warm? Storm's coming out? I'll wear that. And then- oh. I remember that uniform. <laughs> casual detective, office casual priest suit. <laughs> the worst suit in the game. <laughs> it looks kind of nice. Uh, at least what have we got? Uh, basic hat, respect the quiff. Bowler hat. What's in your head? <laughs> oh, the fez. I remember that. And then that. Top hat. Mmm. The signature deer stalker. Put that on. It's raining. Uh, the disguises. That looks kind of rough. Fake. I remember that. And Watson suit. Let's see what we got here. Okay, all right, we're dressed up. Let's go. Now we're looking. The dustbin is yours for the digging, Mr. Holmes. Us. Oh, rainy. Yeah, I I got a head start. Can't go inside there. Okay. The famous Baker Street. 
221B, yep, that is the address. Where's the map? Where we at? Oh, that's where we're at. Oh. And where are we supposed to go? Okay, that's blocked. <laughs> oh, okay, so they're doing some construction. Okay. So first off, let's see here. This is a cactus spine. If it gets in your skin, it's awfully tricky to remove, and when laced with poison, the perfect assassination tool. You were mistaken, Dr. Watson. The paper was indeed dirtied, but not how you implied. It's potting soil. See, Watson? The conspiracy is real. Someone tried to poison me. Poison? You? That's madness. Get the strand. Get your copy of the strand here. Sorry, Mr. Holmes. I just sold my last paper. Blast. Then why are you still here? Boss pays by the hour. No sense in returning early. You're a bright child. I presume you see everything that goes on around here? Nothing gets past me, mister. Then tell me, did you notice anyone suspicious at my door this morning? Hmm. Like the man with your newspaper? Precisely. What do you know? I know the value of a shilling. Dr. Watson. Cool. Now I can take the day off. Can you describe the man you saw? He was carrying a lot of books. Up to his chin, they were. Never heard of a well-read assassin. Looks can deceive. Hence the appeal of disguises. Did you see what he was up to? Nah, not really. I saw him approaching your house, but I had a customer. Then there's a loud bang. I ducked down. Not because I was scared, because I wasn't. I had to protect the merchandise. And all I could see was him kneeling at your door. Which way did he go? Not sure. I was distracted by customers. Sorry. All right. You earned your shilling. That'll be all. Thanks, Mr. Holmes. Maybe I could be your eyes and ears. If you have more shillings. Thanks for that. Not enough clues or evidence yet, so let's keep going. Get the strand. Get Cactus bond for assassination. Allow paying a visit to Mr. Forms is in order. Okay. Got 
so we gotta find Barnes Bookseller. Okay. Come now, Mr. Holmes. Murder? Yes, Barnes has his quirks, but he also has his scruples. Not every pawn knows it's part of a game. Get distracted. Do you even have enemies that would want to kill you? Okay, perhaps from Cordona. Cordona. This home? Get this the strand and get your copy of the strand here. Can I ask you a question? As much as I'd like to help you, I know nothing about this. Is that a Japanese flag? What's wrong with this lady? Is this familiar to you? I wish I could help you, but I don't know. Me, please. I can't help you with that, sir. It was down the street from the Japanese embassy. Wow. It can't be a coincidence. <laughs> what I went through. Yeah, the rain in this game like reminds you of the rain in Japan. Like it was like the day that we landed in Japan, it was raining pretty good. But we've had rain. We've encountered rain for about roughly five or six days out of our vacation. Is this familiar to you? As much as I'd like to help you, I know nothing about this. Uh, it was tolerable to say at least. We were mainly indoors for the most of the part. Luckily, uh, Super Nintendo World was this. Where? Oh, straight ahead, right there. Okay. But uh, luckily. Do you know anything about this? I don't think anyone here knows the answer. You should ask someone else. But luckily, the the rain was tolerable to say the least. Uh, I did buy two umbrellas. The first one, when they sell umbrellas over there, they sell them for pretty cheap. It's just basically like the, the typical metal handle, but instead of like this thick nylon fabric that's that's accustomed to most to most of the umbrellas that are designed, it was like a like a really thin, cheap layer of plastic, and that didn't last long. The wind blew it out and, and warped it pretty bad uh, when we were on the, the Tokyo side of our trip. Let's see what's going here. How about that Vogel fellow? He seems rather obsessed with you. Would he do something like this? Oh yeah, he has some nasty eye bags.
I highly doubt he's a blackmail victim. Bell's eye bag is just giving away. He's a workaholic. Mr. Barnes, a word. <gasps> oh, for goodness sake. Just booked it. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes, now will you please... Mr. Holmes, golly, I did not see you come in. Would you care to answer some questions for me? Well, I wish I could, but I am deep in the weeds with work. How about we uh, reschedule in a month or two? Come now, Mr. Barnes. It will only take a moment. No, really deep in the weeds with, uh, with important things. Well, help yourself to any book, just... Take it and pay later. I trust you, Mr. Holmes. Barnes doesn't seem like himself. Why is he acting this way? You're asking the right questions, Doctor. Let's find a way to coax him out. Uh, apologies, but I can't hear you. Please come back later. It's terrible at feeling. What's this? The ladder is ladder broken is... recently, judging by the freshness of the wood. So, Barnes has a dog now. Who's a good boy? <laughs> Basics of cryptoanalysis, cryptography in Egypt. It appears Barnes has an interesting hobby. Everlasting plans for an everlasting love. What would Barnes want that for? I don't mind if I walk behind the counter. Okay, there's nothing here. Barnes has always been a little odd, but this is uncharacteristic even for him. And thank God God is not imaginary like chapter one. That affected Sherlock's psyche severely in that entire game. So, Barnes has a dog now. Who's a good boy? of Mycroft's secret agents, it's a sign. Dried flowers are replaced when the job is done. I wonder who the recipient is. An improvised stand, but it does make the flowers more visible. The finest view London has to offer. See that for that lady across the street? Hold on a second.
Right, let's go outside. Hello there. What's your name? Lily. I know, not very original. The weather is dreary, isn't it? To be fair, my flowers could use the rainfall. Encouraging people to stop and smell the roses. Our national emblem. God save the Queen. It must take patience and care to produce a bloom so beautiful. I imagine so. I merely sell them. Familiar spy. Does that I seem like dust thorn? The pot is damaged. The blow was severe, but softened by something. Anything tickle your fancy, Mr. Holmes? But this was a little tricky because she's wearing the brooch in honor of her deceased husband, but but she's also wearing makeup too. So is she still grieving because she's wearing the brooch, or she's ready to move on and she's wearing all this fancy makeup? I'm gonna avoid the over complicity of things and say she's ready to move on. She's distracted and she keeps look. She's like staring in front, like. Does she have a thing for barns across the street? Let's see. Let's see if this works. Eyes are constantly darting around the streets, seemingly in search of for something. Crap, she's waiting for someone. Yeah, the makeup is a dead giveaway. That she's ready to move on. Mrs. Fleming, you look particularly lovely today. Is there a reason? Does a woman need a reason to look or feel beautiful? No, but your distant look suggests you seek one man's gaze in particular. Who told you that? Nobody. Merely a keen eye and some simple deduction. Well, I'll kindly ask you to keep your keen eye to yourself, Mr. Holmes. One of these things is not like the other. Come again? The cactus. Those fearsome spines can prove a devil to remove. And the sap is often toxic. 
And a rose thorn can give you tetanus, but we still grow them. The cactus seems comparatively harmless. Though you have me thinking it must be valuable. I was under the impression that you knew its price already. Your guess is as good as mine. The first time I saw this cactus was when I came back from my break. Interesting. What do you make of the flowers in Barnes' shop window? Well, they could use a bit of water. Do they mean anything to you? Mean anything how? I'm not sure I follow Mr. Holmes. Why do you think they're there? Are you suggesting the flowers are for me? It seems likely, does it not? Oh, I hope you're right. <laughs> oh yeah, she's at the Barnes. Are you familiar with Mr. Barnes? Yes. No, not really. Well, in a way. What on earth does that mean? I know who he is, of course. But we haven't shared much more than a look. A look? Yes. Each morning I go for a walk in the park with my dog. And most days I spot Mr. Barnes there with his new puppy. So we see each other. Actually, we once met briefly while our dogs played. He was quiet and seemed unsteady as he approached. But since then, we've never spoken. I often see him staring through the shop window. Sometimes I wonder what he thinks about that would etch such longing onto his face. I should have worn something warmer. We're looking for a cactus needle in a haystack. Hmm, a spine in a book stack. No, come on, Watson, think. Cactus needle in a haystack. All right, let's see. Oh, I see. They're different colors. Okay, observations, documents, testimonies, and items. Okay, that makes sense. I was wondering why the, the, the colors and the spheres were different. Um, I see I can strain. Dead flowers in display? I'll probably play with that. I mean, they're on the window for a reason. And then now uh, let's see here. That's the only connection I can think of. What's that? That's my, I don't know about that. And... Mm, excuse me. Of dead flowers to attract the attention of Mrs. Flippy, of course. 
hoping she will come into his shop and give him some wandering advice, or it could simply be a symbol of his desviates that will enhance the latter. And I don't know if he gifted her a cactus, which he ordered from the catalog on his counter. Questionable choice, but for Barnes, a symbol of his eternal love, since the catalog presents these cacti as immortal. Plainly, this is the same cactus he dropped on the strand outside Sherlock's home. And now let's see what happens. Hmm. I, uh, think perhaps I have been chasing shadows. Do not despair, Mr. Holmes. Even the best of us make mistakes. We better tell Mr. Barnes what we've learned. Hmm, <laughs> yeah. Snitch on Mrs. Fleming. Or, I don't know what, that's the correct term. Alright, might as well tell Barnes the good news. I mean, that would be good news, right? Mr. Barnes, I know what you did, and I know why you did it. I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. I can't hear you very well from behind the door. You ordered a cactus from the plant catalog and then left it for Mrs. Fleming as a gift. You place flowers in the window to get her attention and wear high heels to appear taller and more desirable. You are her secret admirer. <laughs> All that noise. I couldn't read this morning's edition of The Strand because it was covered in soil and spines. I know you dropped a cactus on it and then fled. Barnes, it's Dr. Watson. Rest assured, we are not interested in disclosing your personal affairs to anyone, including Mrs. Fleming. Please come out. Uh, all right, then. So, you know what happened, then? I was on my way back from the post office, having picked up the cactus and some books. It was quite an awkward package, heavy too, and when I got to your door, I dropped the cactus in your paper. Forgive me. I needed that paper to prove a theory and prevent a crime. Your actions were rather disruptive. Your clumsiness carrying the post is matched only by the clumsiness of your romantic gesture. Oh, it's true. I am useless with this sort of thing. I'm not even sure if Mrs. Fleming noticed. As in most things in life, truth is the answer. Cease with the obtruse signals and anonymous gifts and simply talk to the woman. What is the worst that can happen? She rejects you and you are freed from this endless purgatory. That... Yes, you are correct, of course. I do have a slight tendency to overthink things. Thank you. So, at last, we return to the matter of the paper. I'm investigating a string of burglaries. Did you perhaps read of any before the edition was spoiled? I don't recall, but you're welcome to read our copy for yourself. You had an issue of The Strand here all along? Well, naturally. I am a bookseller. I have a subscription to every magazine and newspaper in London. So you ought to be familiar with the concept of burying the lead. I... Oh no, uh, my apologies, Mr. Holmes. I'll make it up to you however I can. I am an expert on obscure languages and translation and, and, uh... Yes, yes, okay. Just give me the paper. All right, good. All right, help Barnes with his love life. He's got the first achievement of this game. Saltpeter Explosion rocks docks.
Come, Dr. Watson. Let us put this matter behind us. Farewell, Mr. Barnes. I hope to hear good news about you and Mrs. Fleming. Let me know if there's any way I can make it up to you. I'll tell you what. Tomorrow's edition of The Strand is on me. OK, OK. Not just tomorrow. A whole week's worth. How does that sound? I like that, but... You're right. I could do more. Next time you move out, I'll be there to help. I'm great with boxes. And feel free to consult my books whenever you like. I could be an asset in one of your investigations. And feel free to consult my books whenever you like. I could be an asset in one of your investigations. I'm sure Barnes has had enough of our meddling, Mr. Holmes. We best be off. Well, that was an utter waste of time. An assassination did seem rather unlikely. There was supposed to be another burglary. I was certain of it. Hmm. Something you wish to say, Doctor? No. Well, only that you have a remarkable faculty for deduction and pattern recognition. And that perhaps, if ill-applied... I see things that are not there. Yes. It is London. There will always be burglaries. Doesn't have to mean anything. So it seems. Forgive me. Without something to occupy my mind, I turn into an entirely different animal. Which brings us back to my news from earlier. I think I have a case for you, a real one. Truly? Indeed. Though perhaps not as thrilling as your stories from Cordona, a patient of mine, Captain Stenwick, told me that his servant disappeared. I said I knew just the man to help. What do you say? Oh, Watson. Yes, I know it's not the most tantalizing mystery nor the story to launch my writing career, but it's brilliant. Let's go. Oh, good. Well, his house is nearby. Come. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's see, where's this at? Oh, I got a new suit, right? Oh, yeah. That's my favorite suit. That's very classy of them, too. And you got the gun. Okay. Alright. I'll rock this for now since it's still raining. People don't tend to come out for flowers when it rains. Perhaps I should try selling door to door. Could you help me? No, I don't know anything about that. Help me, please. I can't help you with that, sir. Help me, please. I can't help you with that, sir. beyond the gate
Stenwick is just down the street from Barnes's bookshop. May I ask you something? I can't tell you because I don't know. You can't be taking a piss that long. <laughs> Impressive stature, strong gaze. I think this man deserves a knighthood. Really, Holmes? How can you be so sure? On rare occasions, Watson, it can suffice to trust one's gut. So this game is somewhat uh, open world, but more like semi-open world because of how small the look this area is. We're only exploring this part of London. Not much further now. There it is. Not so, okay. Is this lousy attitude of yours because of my altercation with Inspector Lockhart? Did he put you up to this? Sir, the Inspector has nothing to do with it. I'm telling you the same thing I tell anyone seeking a missing person. <clears throat> Good day, gentlemen. Forgive the intrusion. Captain Stenwick, this is my colleague Sherlock Holmes, the consulting detective I told you about. At last, a professional. This useless officer refuses to do anything about Kimmy here, my missing servant. What was your name again? I shall be certain to inform your superiors. Sergeant Ruffles. And it's my superiors who made this decision, sir. Have there been other disappearances lately? Of course, here and there. But when life is tough and opportunity comes knocking, you can't blame those who answer. Why has the police department decided not to help? We investigate murders, thefts, fraud, arson, real crimes. A servant walking away from his master is not our highest priority. That said, if we find Kimmy here breaking the law, we'll be sure to notify Captain Stenwick. Now, I must be off. Best of luck in your search. <laughs> you heard that, didn't you? The way that man spoke to me. I shall need your written testimony. Then we can lodge a complaint. Captain, perhaps Mr. Holmes' time is better spent learning about your servant, so that he may begin his investigation. Ah, yes. Quite right. Fire away. Tell me about Kimi here. He's foreign. A Maori. All the way from New Zealand. Biggest man you've ever seen. And as strong as two. Dark hair and fearsome tattoos. He doesn't speak a whit of English. Never bothered to learn. But I made do with pointing. I invested a lot of money in him, so he must be found. When did you last see your servant? Kimi here normally brings me the morning papers, but yesterday I had to get them myself. He must have escaped the night before yesterday. May I see your servant's bedroom? His shack is in the garden. You can't miss it. Did you search the room? Of course, but only to check he wasn't lying dead inside. Everything seemed normal at a glance. Is there any reason Kimahir may have left? I should think not. He had all he could have wanted. Gainful employment, new clothes, and all the cabbage he could eat. Cabbage. I take it this is the first time Kimahir has vanished? Undoubtedly. The man seemed terrified of the city. I think it was all the noise. He never left this estate. Should he cause any damage, I will bear the responsibility, for it was I who rescued him from savagery and brought him here to England in the first place. Did Kimahir make off with anything of value? Heavens, no. I would have mentioned it to Sergeant Ruffles. Still, he must have fled with some money on his person. No, no. I kept his wages in my safe. For security. 
All right, Captain. I think I have enough to get started. We shall first take a look around the mansion. Go ahead. I'll be here, mentally drafting my complaint. Why are you still here? Chewing tobacco. <laughs> a shoe print, roughly size 11, with a worn out sole. These are a workman's boots. Stenwick makes his servant live in a tool shed. You think you know someone. Why do I have three clues, but there's... Get this in. What am I supposed to do with this?
There we go. Looks like a neat print. Someone knelt here. The amount of chewing tobacco suggests they were waiting a while. Amazing, Mr. Holmes. To read the ground like an open book. This lock is quite unusual. It appears that the key should be bent to the right. The rag reeks of smoke. Someone plugged the chimney. Scrap of Hessian. These were sturdy boxes. It would have required a serious blow to break them. Impressive. The safe frame retained the shape of an impact. Someone hit their head here. A small navy spyglass. You do up a spyglass. A Maori nose flute. Ngurus, they're called. Clothes made of Hessian. Is Stem really so miserly? Do you think Kimi here had an accomplice in his escape? No air coming through it. Button chops, the remains of a meal. A heavy chemical odor. Lend me your nose, Doctor. Ah, I'll never forget that smell after my time in Afghanistan. That's an opioid, Mr. Holmes, a narcotic. Opioid. Oh, Ashes are long since cold. I can't even pronounce opium too. <laughs> yes, yeah, Stenwick is no angel, but he's one of my few clients. Please try to remain courteous. Is this a Tanifa, a Maori water spirit, or something else? Either way, it's giving me chills. Rag reeks of smoke. Someone plugged the chip. have left these tracks. They seem fresh.
This disappearance is intriguing. No, I cannot make head nor tail of it. So the key's missing. Okay, interesting. Let's see what else I could. Oh! Back. Hello? Someone moved a cart to this spot and then took it elsewhere. Can't see it anywhere in the garden. I like how there's there's an indicator as to what uh, option you have selected, and uh, I forgot what this this section is called the mind interaction thing where you can hypothesize what happened, what events occurred in, the, in a certain area. I don't know, Sherlock Holmes chapter one. I liked the idea, but it was it was really painstaking to figure out which event was which. I think that's everything though. Alright, let's see. Right, so now I know what that indicates. Okay, good. The key door to the garden has an interesting lock. Yes, I have uncommon locks on every door of my mansion. It makes them harder to pick. Kimmy here and I both had a set of keys. I'll need to borrow them. 
No, you'll need to do what I tell you to do. Examine the garden. Get you. <laughs> Might as well just walk away. I came across a pile of Hessian clothes in the shack. Are they Kimahir's? Yes. I had to give him something to clothe himself. He seemed unfazed by his bare skin, but I found it distracting. Where on earth are you going with this? Is this spyglass familiar? I don't recognize it. Could it be Kimahir's, perhaps? I doubt it. I never saw him with it, nor could I suggest how he might have come by it. Where on earth are you going with this? Do you happen to know Kimahir's shoe size? I wouldn't have the foggiest, but I'm sure it was enormous. Not that it matters. He spent his life barefoot. Despite my best efforts, he simply did not take to shoes. Interesting. So that that wasn't. He, if he doesn't wear shoes, then who is that leaning next to a statue? Has Kimahir ever indulged in tobacco? No. The man doesn't even drink. Are you certain? I found chewing tobacco in the garden. I controlled Kimahir's expenses since he struggled with the currency. I would have known if he used tobacco. See, that's right. Now, next up, damn tree. Let's see if this is right. Which one is that? Is it this one? and he tripped over. That should be it. Surveilling from afar, the intruder waited for a window of opportunity. 
When Kimihir went to sleep, the man crept up to the shack and slipped narcotics down the chimney pipe, then blocked it with a cloth. Kimihir inhaled the sedative and fell into a deep sleep. The intruder tried to move him, but the man was heavier than expected. The intruder fell on the sack and dropped his spyglass. In order to transport the servant, he had to use the cart. The final challenge was opening the garden door. Luckily for our intruder, Kimahir had the key in his shack. Remarkable. It makes total sense. It's fucking tragic. You'd best have found something by now, gentlemen. I found the residue of narcotics in Kimihir's brazier. There are several explanations, perhaps your servant's recreational interest, or an attempt at poisoning. Cut to the chase, Mr. Holmes. I fear that someone may have spied upon Kimahir, likely the owner of the spyglass I found earlier. It appears they were watching for some time, as there was an impressive amount of chewing tobacco on the ground. And your point? You said that you checked the shack earlier. Did you notice the cart tracks near it? Now one ought to expect a servant to make regular use of such a thing. Indeed, I would have overlooked the detail were it not for the cart's absence. If, as you say, Kimahir never leaves your estate, then where did it go? I expect answers from you, Mr. Holmes, not questions. I won't keep you in suspense any longer, Captain. Kimahir was abducted by the owner of the spyglass. When your servant fell asleep, he slipped a narcotic into Kimahir's brazier to make him sleep even more soundly. In order to carry a man as large as Kimahir, the intruder stole the cart and rolled him right out of your garden. Now, hold on. All this simply to tell me what I already know. Why haven't you found him yet? I only arrived a moment ago. It is, frankly, incredible that I have already deduced so much. Every second you dawdle here, waiting for me to stroke your ego, is another second wasted. I'm not interested in the how, the why, or the who. I am only interested in recovering my investment. Spare me the claptrap, boy, and go and fetch my servant. I want to suck you, boy. Uh, the shit. point is, Captain, we're telling you this for a reason. The intruder fled through the garden door, and we need a key to follow his trail. Well, then you should have led with that. Here you go. I hope you'll return soon with good news. And in the meantime, please teach your companion the art of brevity.
Stenwick makes his servant live in a tool shed? You think you know someone? Looks like putting something in the slot may get the gears inside to move. A small minecart. Endearing, if disturbing. Looks like a factory to me. Wonder what could get the gears inside moving. A model of a homely room and fireplace. bears a peculiar form, like it's meant to have something put inside. Yes, Stenwick is no angel, but he's one of my few clients. Please, try to remain courteous. Padlocks have names etched onto them. Anne. Tom Charles. This disappearance is intriguing now. I cannot make head nor a grim head. view. Children's clothes, judging by the size. Are you able to help me? As much as I'd like to help you, I know nothing about this. So look for a corner with a box. It's near a river. Naturally bent legs, yet they look to be a design choice. Seems the treasure hunt used to do lots of those in my childhood for myself. And is it a call for help? A bad joke, or both? Better not risk leaving this matter ignored, don't you think?
just near the bookshop. What does it say? What does it... No seams or torn fabric on this doll. Likely one-legged by design. Oh, so the Arthur Conan Dost uh, bust. I know where it's at.
My gratitude, Sir Arthur. the answer. She asks someone else. My gratitude, Sir Arthur. There's, there's, there's another bus I don't know about. Let me look around. Get the strand. Get your copy of the strand here. Wheels picked up grass along the way. Kimahir's cart, I gather. Oh. 
Sturdy rope, professionally tied in a Portuguese bowline. This knot is often used by sailors to create a bosun's chair. Roy Salisbury. Could that be the name of our man? A strange substance. I have my suspicions based on the color and consistency, but would you care to hazard a guess, Doctor? Well, it's odorless, but from the way it absorbs water, I'd say saltpeter. Then we're in agreement. Well done. A large pile of horse droppings. Many cigarette butts. Someone stood here for hours. There was a cab waiting here. Our abductor slipped in and then off into the night. We're about to end the episode pretty soon, but let me finish this side quest real quick. Um, I've been thinking about it. Let me go back to that bus. There's only one bus, and I pretty much explored this side of London, so let me see real quick. Yeah, this rain was drip. Like, I think the, like, I didn't mind the rain, but the most I was uncomfortable uh, in the rain was uh, the day we went to the Spring Festival in Yokosuka, the open base event. It was pretty. It was raining pretty good throughout the entire event, and I was just uncomfortable. But somehow they made the festival happen. Normally they would cancel those type of events if the rain was that bad, but it wasn't that. Oh, there it is, right there. But it wasn't. A miner with a sooty face, at least, in doll form. What's this? I think we got everything, but, um, but like I was saying, uh, yeah, the, the, I mean, uh, that's when I had the better umbrella, uh, not the cheap plastic one I got. Luckily it didn't rain in Super Nintendo World. Where am I supposed to go all this way? I think that our, our trip to Super Nintendo World, or Universal Studios in Japan, was probably the warmest, and it wasn't even that hot. It was like in the mid 70s at, at its highest. All right, now that I got both dolls here, let's see. Charles.
Ah. Like that I got all three keys. Here we go. Tom, Charles, Anne, and Mary. Get certificate? Oh, man. That explains why Anne's doll had one, one leg. Doll seems recently made. Did he climb up the chimney or something? Not sure I like the treasure hunt's ending. That was so grim. No. Solving this crime is beyond my reach. It is society who must work on sparing children from death by hard labor. That was extremely grim. Jeez, just to learn the the, the, the way that these children died. He was probably probably was smoke insulation, inhalation, and must have lost a leg in the factory playing around somewhere. And then, and then Tom, well, he was probably goofing around a minecart or something. That was really dark. All right, let's see if we could wrap up this episode. I think we're almost done with this chapter here. Let's see. Let's continue investigating. Huh? Wait, wait, let me pin. Actually, I got everything. So, wait, what clothing did I get? For Watson. Hmm, stylish. I like that. Alright, um, let's see here. That's pretty cool. We can earn more suits by collecting a certain amount of investigation points rather than the DLC stuff. Although, I got the deluxe edition of this game. It wasn't that much, only 50 bucks. Let's see here. Noticeable features. Alright, uh, Sailor's 
not. Oh, cause there goes the Alright, so where does this trail lead to? Um, let's see that and the clothing. Let's see if this works. I got one thing. So I got the wallet with saltpeter. Sailor's not. Alright, I've right, booked your sailor. So one more thing. Oh, the strand. Or is that the calling card? Did I do the calling card? So it's the strand. The explosion? The distraction? Okay. Oh, it's the sailor. Duh. Strand proved not so useless after all. The saltpeter accident, Doctor, do you recall? The Port of London, of course. The footwear, the spyglass. Indeed, we shall need to take a cab there. Uh, where do we find the cab at? Talk with Stanwick real quick. Let's see. If you find my man, I have a marvelous whiskey with your name on it. Yeah, I'll take that. Could you help me? Excuse me, what? Well, I'm not sure I know. Excuse me, just one question. I don't think anyone here knows the answer. You should ask someone else. We don't find a cab service around here. This guy? Oh, okay. Hmm. I don't think we're done here. Where to go? The Port of London, please. I will show you where to stop. Are the subtitles down there if the freaking titles are over there? Mr. Holmes, what a compelling mystery we have stumbled upon. Perhaps I have the premise of my next novel. Uh, on kidnapping does not a story make? Stop! A black cat crossed before us. 
It's a bad omen. I did not take you for the superstitious type, Doctor. Such things are mere fantasies, tricks of a feeble mind. One imagines a physician would keep a surer footing in reality. Perhaps, before the war, my time abroad was difficult. Once, I came across an Afghan, bleeding, who I could not save. He pressed a rosary into my hand. A gift, he said, so as to gain God's favor. After that... Dr. Watson? Yes, well, I shan't get into details, but sometime later I found myself lost in the desert. Dehydration set in, and things grew ever more dire. The man's words came to me. I said a prayer and placed the rosary on a rock. A gift to gain God's favor. And you were rescued? Yes. A detachment of British soldiers found me. To whom I'm grateful. Without their diligence, you would not be standing here and I would not have this case. I'm sure you have another explanation prepared, Mr. Holmes, but I think I shall cling to the occasional superstition all the same. To each his own, Dr. Watson. So long as it does not interfere with my methods, do it. We must press on, cat or no cat. The question remains, why abduct Kimmy here? We're gonna end the episode over here. This is all coming back to me from the chapter one game. So next episode, oh, what am I doing here? Okay, next episode. Let me see what the map looks like here. Oh wow, what's with those red lines? Okay. Okay. So, but the next episode, we're gonna see where. Where Camille is, hopefully we can find him and see why they abducted him. Alright guys, thanks for tuning in to this first episode and welcome back to everybody watching. I'm just glad to be back uh, doing this. Uh, stay tuned for episode 2 where we continue the mystery of the disappearance of Camille.